Hello, everybody, and welcome to part 5 of my Amorish base review. I am Roy Awesome, and I am here talking about the bases on Amorish. Um, this is part 5. I did uh, parts 1 through 4 a week ago, um, and I went through every base on Amorish. Part 5 is just a follow up video that I want to record uh, to show off some changes that they've made since I recorded my last videos. Uh, so, I'm here at Sungray Overwatch. Oh, yeah, and uh, my apologies for the sound quality of the microphone. I'm want to fix it, but I cannot fi seem to find a solution to that, um, so it just sounds terrible. Um, I'm here at Sungry Overwatch, which is a base, um, in case you guys didn't follow, uh, when I submitted the, or when I sent out these videos, I tweeted them at Mallorn and at Arklegger and a couple of other level designers at SOE, and it uh, generated a pretty good conversation on Twitter uh, between them, so I'm just kind of running through some of the bases and covering some of my thoughts now that after feedback like, the response to the feedback from the developers. So, I'm here at uh, Sungray Overwatch. Now, if you remember my last video, um, I came to this base, and it was unfinished. So, I'm here to show off the finished section. Um, part one of the video shows off everything over there. Part, and this part, I'm going to show off the area that is unfinished. Now, this is, um, Mallorn tweeted me and said that this was, that that, this base was unfinished, and that this is the, it is now finished on the test server. And, uh, yeah, there's a bunch of ways up for Sunders here, which are great. Uh, there's a Sunder path that extends from the Amherst Eastern Warp Gate, and there's a Sunder path that extends from the Sungra Amp Station. And they both come up to this back area over here. Uh, and these are pretty cool. It's got some ramps up, and they come up to some bridges that are pretty fun looking. I'm worried about these bridges and their, how much of a grinder they're going to be in order to get into the base. Because you're just going to have to set... There's no cover on these bridges, really. Um, I would like to see some more cover along this wall here. Because anybody down there will just shoot you as you're coming across. And yeah, I guess you could shoot them back. But the defenders are going to have an easier time getting to that spot than the attackers are getting across the bridge, I feel. So I feel like these bridges are maybe a little bit too exposed. Um, they're way too exposed to the air, but I don't think that that's going to be that big of an issue nowadays with uh, galaxy spawns and that kind of stuff. So... This is cool. Um, one improvement I would like to see is um, these Araxium crystals over here. They should glow purple um, and have some kind of night lighting effect. Just because it's hard to tell where these Sunder Bays are, and so some light cues to determine where the Sunder Bays are would be amazing. There's another Sunder Bay over here. These are cool Sunder Bays. Um, these are going to be very, very safe Sunder Bays. Um, and I'm going to talk about in another base uh, safe versus unsafe um, Sunder spots. Um, because I believe that risk versus reward is a very important aspect to consider um, when attacking a base. So these are very, very low risk, low reward um, Sunder spots. There's actually a Sunder spot over there that's a very high risk, high reward Sunder spot. Um, so I feel like this base has great risk versus reward mechanics right here. As you see, you park a Sunder right here. It's really easy to kill, but you get right up into the base to where over here, it's much harder to kill. Um, but you have to run further. So I really like the uh, the risk versus reward mechanic that is going on here at this at this base and with these Sunder Gates. So this is Sungray Overwatch. Um, finished, it is a much better base than unfinished. Um, surprise. So, good work, Malorn. The next base I want to come talk about is McCullough Watchtower. And I have a actually quite a few issues with this base. Um, this base was unfinished, completely unfinished. There's random buildings spread out around the base when I came to it last. So, and I believe it's still unfinished. Um, there's a lot of broken jump pads and a lot of broken lifts um, at this base. So, it's still pretty unfinished, but the, great, the, the general layout of the facility is set up. Um, and I have some issues with Sunder placements at this base. Now, so, in order to better understand this base, we have to kind of give a big overview of it. And let's do that right now. So, as you see, by the way, Sunrise here on Amorish is beautiful. I don't know if uh, SOE has done anything to improve the looks of the Sunrise, but the Sunrise is amazing. Um, I cannot wait to be fighting to death. Oh yeah, and I've also improved the graphics on my computer. I got a new processor, so I'll be streaming more too. Which is kind of nice. So, we've got a big gate here. Now, if you're coming from the south... Um, from the in TR warp gate down here, you have, you're have you forced through this gate. Now, I don't know if the gate actually works and there's a vehicle shield here, but if it does, I think the vehicle shield needs to be fixed. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's not 
completely functional right yet because a lot of these things like there's a shield generator over here and I don't know if it actually ties to this gate shield or what I'm not entirely sure what's going on here in terms of this base so now we have a courtyard area once you pull into here you have a nice courtyard area which is decently defended from thunder or from tanks but you can still drive tanks easily up into this area uh, you have a thunder bay here that is a clear thunder bay and you have another Sunder Bay over here behind this building. Um, it's an implicit Sunder Bay. It's not, er, it's, it's not explicit by the level designer. But if you don't think you can park a Sunder right there, you're sorely mistaken. Sunder could easily go there. Um, as you get closer... Now, I don't know what the no deploy zone of this is. But I feel like this area right here is another good place for a Sunder. Now, I'm not entirely sure if there's intended to be a vehicle shield here. But I feel like there should be. Um... Uh, a vehicle shield under this spot right here because I feel like being able to just drive a Sunder up and park it right here completely nullifies a lot of the effects of this base. Now of course there is a jump pad that takes you to these towers um, so I, I'm not sure if that'll be, it'll probably be a very high risk high reward Sunder placement um, and I'm pretty sure that you cannot get past this point with a no deploy zone um, for deploying Sunder which will force people fighting my biggest gripe with this base is actually this entrance right here. Now let me give you a good overview of this base to understand where this entrance is in relation to the rest of the base. Now there is that gate I was talking about earlier that you have to go through. And that other entrance is right here. Now my biggest qualm with this, and I believe I see another entrance over here that you can exploit. Yes you can. You can totally get through here with... Okay, I'll show that off later too. Uh, my, now my biggest issue with this right here, this entrance, you can just park a Sunder right up to it, and just park a Sunder right in here or something, and run through here and get to the point. And, and it's no problem at all, you just kind of walk in, and you're in here. Now it kind of defeats the whole purpose of the front of the base, um, to put a Sunder there, because you just walk in and here's, and by the way I have to show you the point room. This is actually a really cool internal based fighting area. But you just kind of walk in here, and there's the spawn room. So that, that's relevant for a point I'm going to make here. And then you kind of climb up here, and here's the point. Now, this completely, completely, completely goes around the entire front of this base. Now, I can imagine this base taking part in two really distinct... That needs to be fixed. Um, and there's no lifts here, by the way. So that's another thing that needs to be fixed. I could imagine this base taking part in two really distinct um, phases. You have a fight at the entrance here, um, over this gate and the entrance of this base. Especially if the gate has a vehicle shield there. Um, and that is a very low respawn time. Um, the attackers will have a significant advantage attacking this gate because they can park Sunderers right up to these walls. Of course, the defenders will have to put Sunderers here too. Um, you can park them right up to those walls, fight over there. Um, and then the walls will break, and then you have to move into this base, you fight over this area, and you do, everybody deploys Sunders in this area, and then it transitions deeper into here once the attackers get a foothold um, in the base. Now, with that back entrance, the attackers can skip the entire process of attacking this base and just go straight for the capture point, which... Uh, doesn't seem like that big of a deal. Sure, you can you can uh, go straight for the cap point, but if you think about it from like a progression standpoint, it kind of nullifies all the little progression of this base. Like, there could be a, this base could be a really cool and fun fight, but this back entrance completely breaks that. I guess you can't get over. Uh, yeah, you can walk over here, and then this is another entrance. Um, you can just kind of walk down here, park a sunder right here because you're guaranteed going to get a Sunder up here. Park a Sunder up here, and you can just hop over here. And I feel like you should force the uh, attackers into using that gate, and then spreading out from there. I think the contention there will be really fun. Um, that being said, oh, Roy, it's really close to the spawn room. Uh, the defenders can just jump over this cliff and blow it up with tank mines or something. Or blow up any t Sunder with tank mines or something. And I actually tested this. Um, I actually went through and tested how to get from the spawn room here to that Sunder zone. And it is really hard to get over there. Like, it's incredibly difficult to get over to that Sunder. Uh, you have to be light assault in order to jump these rocks. You cannot get over there with tank mines. 
you have to ex you either have to do that or you have to exploit the uh, dr uh, the uh, bug where you can put squad beacons in the squad spawn room so you can drop your engineers on top of this rock formation to get over it and so, uh, take mine asunder. It's really hard to get over here. And that means, because it's so difficult for the defenders to cross this rock line, that they cannot put pressure on this sunder. Making this sunder, any sunder deployed right here, is a very, 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 very low risk sunder placement. It's a very low risk and very high reward for putting a sunder just right here. So, the defender in me wants for this entire area to be sealed, or like put like lift these up so like defenders only light assaults and defenders can access this area like lift them up so that like you have like a, a ledge here about right right at this area and the entrance you have to like go through it something like that i feel like some kind of emplacement here this this right here should not be accessible by any pubby sunder driving up deploying and then just the entire zerg rushing through this one entrance and of course this will be a grinder but that just means that if if you put 48 people trying to rush through these two doorways like the like five people just need to go around blow up the tank or blow up the uh, shield generator here at this position and then just walk through so you basically just make a huge distraction here and then you can just end the fight in the front i i, I feel like it's very it's too much of a shortcut to defend this base, or to attack this base, for what could be a really, really, really cool and fun fight. Now, the inside of this capture point is really cool. I like the stair mechanics, I like the uh, multi-level. This actually reminds me of the Interlink Station on Hassan, um, how this is designed out. And I feel like these, again, these giant garages are a very good thing for level design. And I feel like the addition of them and the modular pieces for the uh, added in Nexus are probably the coolest things that have been added to the game in a very long time. It gives the level designers a lot of tools to do, have a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, this entire area is pretty cool. Um, there are turrets here that aren't showing up, but that's not a big deal. This base still isn't finished, but it's it's a thing. So yeah, that's my, that's my major gripe about this base, is the very easy to access uh, shortcut that is very safe for the attackers to use. Um, there's also a underground feature to this base, and I don't remember where it is. Oh yeah, it's out this doorway right here. It's right here. Um, you can't get into the spawn room to see it, but there is an underground feature. You just go up there, you go down below, and you can come out inside the spawn room. Which gives the defenders a safe way um, if the attackers are running to this doorway right there, because that's how they get in, is through that doorway. Um, it gives the defenders a safe passage into the spawn room, which is nice. It's very useful to have. So here's the underground feature. Um, the lighting in this entire zone is really nice. And in fact, I have to really comment on the lighting. Um, the lighting, the night lighting on Amorish is really nice. Like, the buildings actually have lights inside. Um, there are... Like, building, buildings have lights. There are light cues for some door placements and stuff like that. Which is all really nice stuff. Um... This game has a deferred rendering or deferred lighting engine, and I feel like SOE hasn't really been making use of it. There's a gap here; it's a problem. SOE really hasn't been making use of it, which is a, a real shame because it, the game is, has very beautiful lighting, um, and they're starting to really make use of it here on Amherst. So more lights, please. So, and then the final base I'm going to talk about today is uh, Araxian Crown Break. Araxium Cryobank. This is another base that I visited uh, last time when it was unfinished. Um, and I made a comment that it was a very uh, Ezimir style base with walls and stuff. It is not that. That is, I was wrong. Uh, I'm very happy I was wrong. I saw it earlier and it had like a bunch of walls and stuff. And then they changed it completely. And now it's really cool. It's... I'll, let me, I'll explain more when I get there. Um, there's some pieces to this base that are definitely unfinished, so I'm not sure if it's going to be finished. Uh, it's going to end up on the test server. I'll probably make a follow-up video of this base specifically once um, once it is finalized on test, um, and I'll probably do that when I talk about the Frere Amp Station changes. But so let's oopsies. So let's start with this Sunder Garage here. 
So, warp gate for the TR, south warp gate. It's very useful to know that that's right there, which means that this base isn't going to be fought over very often, which is a real shame that bases that are close to the warp gates aren't really fought over. Um, but here it is, Rax and Crown Bank. Here's an overview. There's a Sunder Garage right here, very explicit Sunder Garage. Um, and there is a tunnel entrance that you can run through right there. Uh, I actually have an issue with this tunnel entrance because it is very ex like long and no cover. It's got a couple of these uh, big garage facility things. And it's got a spawn room over here. Now, I don't know if there's actually a teleporter room set here or not. Um, again, this base is really, really unfinished. So a lot of the um, things that I'm going to be mentioning probably will change. So this base has two really or has a low ri or a low risk, low reward sunder placement here. So if you're attacking from the warp gate, that's a good place to put your sunder. And has a very high risk, high reward sunder placement here on this bridge. There is another high risk, high reward sunder replacement right here, but it doesn't seem like it just because there's a wall there. Um, light assaults can jump over it, and squad beacons can get over it. So it's very high risk, high reward. So let's uh, wander on over into here. Um, so they make use of these buildings a lot in this base to create kind of a, wa uh, a walled-in pseudo wall or a tunnel in pseudo wall and they're kind of cool i believe that i just found a bug yeah so this window needs to be sealed um so it, it's kind of a pseudo tunnel-y wall thing you can't actually get in to this part of the base like you there's stairs over here which is a way up there is the pseudo wall thing that you can walk in, as I showed you earlier, and there's stairs on the far side. Once you get into here, um, there is stairs up on both sides here. Now I feel like these stairs are a mistake, and I'll explain why in a second. And then you have a big open area here that you can fight over um, with side doors, which I believe should all with stairs over here. Now, again with the um, layered bases, I feel like. I feel like this should be no... I don't think you should have stairs here. Because I feel like these stairs should go and force people into this internal area here to fight inside and then come up here. And here. Because you can come up inside of this area. And forcing people into this area creates like a fight zone here that these stairs just kind of circumnavigate, and it makes no sense to have those there. Like, why would you ever... As a defender, why would I ever put people in this building when they can just simply go around from any Sunder spot? Like, that's my thought here. So I think these stairs should go. These stairs on the side here, I think, are fine. Because they take you to another place, and they put you right close to the spawn room. So they're very... It's a shortcut to the... Like, it's not a shortcut specifically to A point. It's a different avenue of attack that has different... And I feel like the timing here is probably slower to get to A. So I feel like these stairs are bad. Those stairs are good. Um, and I believe there's stairs, a second staircase up on this side. No, there's not. Okay. Yeah, and get rid of these stairs too because there's no other way up here. And then I'll just... It, it forces it forces a multi-layered fight rather than just, oh, I can just walk around this entire defensive emplacement. If if you put defenders into the inside of this big room, the attackers can just walk around it. And that... I, I don't like that. You should have multiple avenues of attack, but you should never have shortcuts through defensive locations. Um, and then we have our capture point, A, here. Which I really like the multi-layered area here. I feel like there should be a path across, like a bridge here, um, so that way you can get over here as an as the defenders and like shoot down into it. And I feel like um, in part one I showed off Jagged Lance Mine, and I feel like there should be like some more cover specifically around the A point um, because I don't feel like there's enough cover in this room. So maybe it's just this base needs a cover pass. Again, it's unfinished. So that's why I'm kind of going into these pieces. Um, 
I don't understand the point of these things. I feel like they're going to be ramps of some kind, uh, which is cool. I like it. I like the idea of ramps here. Um, and then here we have... Oh, there's the teleporter room. Okay. Um, I don't like how this only has one entrance, because the at attackers can just camp this entrance right here, and you're effectively camping the entire spawn room. So, or the entire teleporter room. So there needs to be other exits to this the underground room. And here, um, because you can kind of... You should be able to jump over these ledges. Um, I feel like there should be, like, kind of like a... a um, this barricade should have, like, a rampart or something up there. So that way you can climb up here and shoot down. Um, given... So that way you can defend the spawn room a little easier. Oh, I guess there is another way up here. Okay, so there is a second exit. I'm not entirely sure about this big open room. Like, I feel like you could just put the those defensive shields here, put a teleporter in here and some stuff. I don't know, it just seems big. I'm actually out of ammo, surprisingly. I use guns to illustrate my points. I shoot things. We're going to make, make it my point. Another issue I have with this base is the fact that the attackers cannot get to the vehicle terminal. And that is an issue because I feel like... Um, the attackers having an infiltrator hack a terminal, vehicle terminal, is an incredibly important part of attacking a base. And it's something that I feel like should be an option for every single attacker. Like, every single base, the attacker should have the options of hacking the vehicle terminal. It's just part of the defense of that, or part of attacking that base. Um, finally, there's an underground feature to this space, and I kind of skipped it a little bit intentionally, because uh, I wanted to show it off last. But there is an underground feature of this base, and it's the low it's the low risk, low reward Sunder placement. Um, and it's right here. Um, this doesn't have any cover, and it really bothers me that it doesn't have any cover. I also it also bothers me that it's just a straight shot. I feel like you could add in some more like some cooler design down here. Um, have more ways up into the base and stuff like that. Just kind of extend out this tunnel a little bit, make it cool. But it, it definitely needs some more cover because, like, a single hacksaw max will just ruin anybody's day coming through here. Um, I guess it's too long. The range here is too long for a hacksaw max to ruin people's days. But since there's no cover, it's just like, I guess you can kind of crouch there, but not really. It's like when you get up to this point right here, it's very long. Maybe, um, another thing is, is the run time here is very, very long. And I want to time this later. But the run time here takes forever. I think this is like 45 seconds to, to a minute to run through this entire tunnel. So maybe some way to speed that up a little bit. Um, these teleport or these lifts don't work. Again, this base is unfinished, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, I really like these. Um, I think it's clever that the level designer, whoever did this, put these uh, things here. Because other bases... So this p panel right here this opening in the ground is a feature of these giant prefab bases. They all have this underground panel. So the level designers put these things here over the top of these in order to cover it up when you don't want to have an underground feature here. Or when you don't want to go down. So I think it's clever that these are lifted up and put on the side here. I, I just think that's clever. It, it kind of points out that, oh yeah, we just use these, these prefab objects here to cover up something when I don't want to use it, and so good work on that. So yeah, that's my that's my uh, that's my judgment on this base, is it's, it really just needs this staircase, or these two staircases removed, so that way you force people into this underground facility um, to a fight over, and that way you have, like, the defenders can come down here and have a logical reason to defend this room, as well as having to defend over there as well. So it kind of increases the way around and if you get up over here then you have to pull defenders out of this room in order to defend this this corner here so the, these staircases just need to go and you could also put like some like defenses here so you can shoot down and stuff that'd be kind of cool at forcing forcing fights into certain rooms is better than having a staircase here so yeah Thank you for watching. Um, this is a much shorter video than my other videos on the topic of Amrish. Oh, there was one more thing I wanted to talk about, and that would be the um, I want to talk about the lattice links. Now let me pull up 
the picture of lattice here. Uh, one second. I should have had this done before I started this thing. But I forgot. Okay, so. Uh, lattice. So the lattice here is very interesting. Um, and I like a lot of what has happened on this base. Uh, by the way, this picture was presented by Mal or given to me by Malorn. Um, it's on Twitter. And this is the lattice setup. If you notice on this, the lattice isn't there, so... We had to have a picture of it taken. Um, now, w there are a couple things I want to talk about the lattice here, and the like the really important stuff on lattice, and that is um, that is in the middle here, where you have the ascent and the center point. There are a couple of crucial lattice links to this base or to these things that I feel need to be. Um, I feel like the middle part here needs to have a few more lattice links because. Those bases are really cool. Stuff like the Ascent, um, Lift Corp, Central, and Raven's Outlook. Those are really cool bases. So I feel like there needs to be like a link, different links to these bases to increase the ability for attacking. I feel like the Bastion to Rock Slide is a big important link that needs to be made. Um, other than that, it's kind of a it's really cool. Um, another thing is I really like the double ring setup we have going here. If you notice along the edges of this map. Um, like Kawadi to Wokuk to the Emmer South Gate to Xalus to Onatha to Eastern Gate to Sungre to Kanikinom to Western Gate. Um, this forms a ring. And then you have Heoka to Tumas to Makala. That forms a ring. So this double ring system is prevalent in Esimir, but it is not prevalent, it is not done on Indar. I feel like it, I feel like this will increase the amount of fights we have in certain areas, this, this kind of ring system. It makes it feel a little bit more, uh, it, it allows you to have it allows you to create three two-way fights and one three-way fight, which is really important. Um, your three-way fights will form up around NC or your two-way fights will form up around NC Arsenal. In this picture, the Eastern Warp Gate and the Western Warp Gate, the NC and the VS will fight over um, the NC Arsenal a lot at the north here. Um, in the south, hey, uh, the areas around um, I don't remember what this base is. West Pass Watchtower, Cobalt Communications, that area in the west. Let me move over so you can see my mouse. Um, this area in the west here, um, this will be a big fight between the VS and the TR. And then over here, the area around um, Split Peak Pass, which needs a better link over to the north. The areas around Split Peak Pass and stuff like that, those are also fought over. My biggest gripe is the link between Split Peak and East Hills Checkpoint, because I don't think there's a road there. Um, I'll have to double check that later, but um, if there's no road between those two bases here, let me again pull you over here. If there's no bi road between these two bases, then there's an issue. Again, minimap hasn't been updated. Another thing I would like to see is the um, hex of, like the outer hexes around the edges of the map here. Um, let me move this again. Uh, this outer hexes around the edge of the map. I would like to see them extended out over the ocean a little bit. Um, some of these hexes do go out over the ocean. Down here around Toramar goes out over the ocean. Up here at North Grove goes out over the ocean. Um, over here at the Scarfield Reliquary in Wilcock Ecological, Ecological Preserve. These go out over the ocean. I would really like to see the hexes go out that far. Now... A lot of people say, oh, what are you going to do out there? You don't need to use that territory. But with the addition of galaxy spawn points and the fact that you have to force fights around bases due to Lattice, I feel like the ability to fly over the ocean a little bit and like move around, have more airspace around the edges of the map, I feel like that's a... I feel like it's time to explore that. Back before galaxy spawn points came out, that wasn't very important. Like, there was no reason to go out that far. Like, it was just a complete and total waste of time to go out that, to go out over the ocean. 
But now that we have Sunder or Galaxy spawn points, we can sneak things around. We have big air battles starting to form around, trying to shoot down these galaxies and take out spawn points flying around the map. Um, let's give more room for these guys to play around on. Like, down here around Wokuk... Let me remove the image. Down here around Wokuk, um, this area around here, there's so much airspace that you can have a nice little fight around. And the link, if we look at the link here, is between Wokuk Watchtower and Wokuk Amp Station. So, the since this link is exist, you cannot do anything out here. There's no reason to go out here except for um, an oh shit moment when you're getting gone on by a bunch of mosquitoes in a VS Galaxy. Like, this gives more room for you to fly around. It takes you away further from the, the AA guns and creates fields of just like air battles that you can possibly fight in. So I'd like to see a little bit more space around the edge of this map and basically try to see if there's more that can be done with that space. Uh, you could always create kill fields around the water and kill people as they fall into the water. So it's not that big of a deal. So I'd like to see that. Um, if you have any comments on this video, please um, post them on Reddit, comment on this video on YouTube, um, send me a tweet, at Roy Awesome. Um, I'm more than happy to respond and talk about this stuff. I really like the idea of, like, when I look at these bases, I think of them both level design perspective and how to attack and defend these points. So I, I like to think about these things more. And if you have suggestions or like, oh, you missed something and want to show me something cool, feel free to just tell me about it and I will uh, I'll chat about it. So thank you. Um, this has been really awesome. It's been my follow-up feedback on a couple of the bases at uh, on Amorish. So thanks. Have a good day.